Hi, my name is Daryl Peterson and I'm the manager of the Applications Engineering Department here at MicroMeasurements. I'd like to take a minute and show you a very common uh, half bridge that gets used for strain gauge type measurements. In this particular case, we've got two strain gauges mounted on the top and the bottom of a simple cantilevered beam. We put one gauge on the top, one gauge on the bottom, and then we end up wiring them together into the same circuit. If you look closely, you'll see that the gauge on the top is wired between P plus, positive excitation, and S minus, which is our negative signal out. And the gauge on the bottom, which we have labeled as R4, is wired between S minus and P minus. Now, one of the advantages of uh, orienting strain gauges like this is that effectively we can double the signal. The reason that happens is when we take these two strain gauges and we wire them into adjacent arms. And adjacent arms of a Wheatstone bridge means basically they share a corner, and in this case that corner happens to be the one labeled as S minus. But when you wire them together into adjacent arms, electrically speaking, they subtract. So as you begin to apply a load, you have R1 on the top sensing a tensile load, and you have R4 on the bottom sensing a compressive load and effectively you have a doubling of the output signal. And oftentimes in strain gauge measurements that's a good thing. It's kind of rare that you have too much signal. Many times you find that you need to look for ways to try to boost the signal you get out of this circuit. And one of the ways to do that is to use a half bridge. So if we kind of take that and take a closer look, what we find is that those two strain gauges, since they are subtracting from each other, another response that we gain from that is the fact that it compensates for thermal output. Assuming both gauges are at the same temperature, both gauges are identical, they generate the same thermal response, and in the Wheatstone bridge they're going to subtract from each other so it cancels. Uh, it's going to be sensitive to bending loads, but it would actually cancel axial and uh, side and torsional loads with this configuration because if both gauges see the same change again effectively they null each other out. Also we find that in this case we, our number of active arms is given as N which is equal to 2 because both gauges are contributing the same amount just a different uh, sign. One is in tension, one is in compression. And then lastly as we've discussed this means that our, our uh, indicated output is going to be doubled. So we get twice the amount of signal giving the same strain that's in that cantilevered beam. So that's a good thing. You've just doubled your signal. You canceled unwanted things like thermal output and possibly some side or axial loads. And overall, that can make a, a better measurement. So, and just to note, in order for this to have very good temperature compensation, it means that your material really needs to be homogeneous or isotropic, meaning that it's consistent and it expands the same in all directions. If you'd like to find out more about this type of circuit or any others, take a look at our website at www.micro-measurements.com. Thank you.